I'm gonna talk a little bit about premature babies and tell you guys about Bracey's birth story. Bracey was born a week ago today at 30 weeks. I have a history of preterm labor. I was on bed rest with all of my five babies. My first baby was born at 37 and a half weeks. My second two at 36 weeks and like a couple days. And my two girls, my fourth and fifth babies were born at 35 weeks and you know, a couple days. So Bracey has come the earliest at 30 weeks. Let me tell you guys a little bit about Bracey's first day. Um, I had a pretty good pregnancy. They noticed that my cervix looked a little short, which I think is just how my cervix is when I was 24 weeks pregnant, which I'm going to talk about in my pregnancy week to week series. And they put in something called a pessary, which was supposed to hold the cervix in place. Everything looked fine. I had a sonogram at 29 weeks where the cervix looked fine. But the Tuesday after that, I noticed some blood in my panty liner and I was with Paulus and I said, you know what? We're going right to the hospital because I knew that was really abnormal. We got to the hospital, they put on a belt to measure the contractions and I was contracting, although in a light and not painful way, up to three times every 10 minutes. They put me on a medication. That medication didn't work. They put me on a stronger medication, which by the way, gave me like the worst headache I've ever had in my life. I was on that medication for two days until late last Thursday night, at which point strong and painful labor contractions started. And I was like, oh no. At that point, the doctors examined me and they saw that I was already four centimeters dilated and my obstetrician came in and she said, I can't do anything more to stop this baby. The labor contractions were so painful at this point and they were every like 10 minutes or five minutes. I mean, they weren't that frequent, but they were so painful that I asked for the epidural. I've had natural childbirth twice, but it's nothing I, you know, am so wedded to. And I admire those of you who are dedicated to it, but I just was like, please give me the epidural. So they gave me an epidural and here I'm in Spain. I mean, I have never had an epidural like this. It literally knocked me out. I felt nothing in my entire lower body. I was so knocked out from the epidural. I went to sleep for like two hours. I woke up, the doctor looked at me. I was 10 centimeters dilated. And I'm like, oh my God, this baby's only 30 weeks old. So they got all the people from the NICU. There are like 10 people there. They took out the pessary, they broke my water, I pushed three times, I could barely feel the pushing, and boom, Bracey was born September 4th, 2020. To my amazement, since he was only 30 weeks old, they immediately put the baby on my chest, and I was so relieved because with Beckett, he was whisked away, and I could never hold him, and it was a horrible feeling, and they put Bracey on my chest, and they're like, he's breathing fine, and we were like, what? How can that be possible? And they brought him down to the NICU and he continued to breathe perfectly fine. He did not need a respirator. We were in shock. However, they did give him a feeding tube through the nose and later that day they installed a second catheter that went from his elbow all the way to his heart to administer water, vitamins, and minerals. That, you know, Paulus was like really freaked out about because he thought it was very dangerous and we were happy that they took that out just a couple days ago. But this other feeding tube through the nose is now what they're using to feed Bracey. So I was wheeled up to my room. Paulus went down and had Bracey on his chest for three more hours. And I'm like, hello, like I'm here. Am I gonna get to see the baby? Like I didn't even have my phone. Like there was nothing I could do. I was just waiting there figuring that everything was okay. I didn't even have a report. I waited like three hours. <laughs> And then uh, Paulus went up and I sort of got my act together a little bit and I went down to see Bracey and I held him on the chest and the doctors explained to me that the best thing in the world was to have him on our chests as much as possible. So that's what we've tried to do over the past week. It's called skin to skin contact. We've tried to do that. Bracey has had a combination of my breast milk and milk from a milk bank. This has gone down in the earlier days. He had more milk from the milk bank. Now he's switching and is getting primarily my milk, which I'm really happy about, but I'm so grateful to the mothers who provided this milk to the milk bank. 